This Excel tutorial is all about pivot table conditional formatting. Now you may already be familiar with conditional formatting in Excel, but when you're doing it with a pivot table, it is a little different. What's more, we're going to look at this Excel spreadsheet so that we can change the color of an entire row based on the value of one particular cell. So I'm Simon from Computer Tutoring. Let's get started. So if you're wanting to follow along with this Excel accounts tutorial, then you'll need to download the exercise file. I'll make that available to, below. Uh, then you'll find a link to our supporting website where you'll not only find the starter file, but the completed file, just in case you want to yourself go step by step through how to create this spreadsheet. Now, um, when it comes to conditional formatting, a lot of people try to, with pivot tables, try to do the same thing. So for instance, they would sort of highlight, say for instance, all the cells here across here, or maybe sort of column E if they wanted to here. And then they would go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, you can see at the top. And if I said like less than 90% in there, it's light red, but there's a lot of problems with this. The first one obviously is you get all of this stuff up here at the top. And then if I scroll down the bottom, down the bottom here, you get a lot of this extra junk. But more importantly, when I start filtering the pivot table, the conditional formatting completely disappears. Rend rendering it useless. So we're not going to do it that way. So what I'd like you to do is firstly, I'm going to clear this conditional formatting by just selecting the E column there and going down to clear rules. And actually I'll clear the rules from the entire sheet. So first thing we're going to do is show you how you were conditional formatting, uh, how you would use conditional formatting in a pivot table. So just click on the, um, you see here I've got quarters, which are financial quarters here, and then I've also got the different months. So if I want to conditionally format just the months, I click in for the sum of profit. I click in the sum of profit for this, that month there. I would then go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, then I can say less than. I can then in this value here, type in my 90%, if I wanted to less than 90% and click on OK. But now you can see I can get this tiny little icon just here, moving around a bit. You see that tiny little icon there? If I click on that icon, I get an option here to show all cells showing sum of profit and values for dates only. And the values for date is this month here because it's the lowest in the hierarchy of dates that I'm using. And if you look carefully, you can now see that anything below 90% has come up in red and what's more if i start filtering the pivot table or update and clearing the pivot table then they update so it's all looking rather good but the problem is with this um is is, is the fact that uh yeah well you know it's um only doing this one cell what happens if i want this cell and this cell and this cell to all update based on that cell's value well, to do that, you would have to create a conditional formatting formula. So we're going to do that from scratch, basically. So I'm going to go and up to conditional formatting and then clear again and then clear rules for the entire sheet. I'm going to decide I'm going to start here in E6 because I'm going to still want to do the conditional formatting for the dates. I'm then going to go to conditional formatting and new rule. So you can see it says new rule. And then if I zoom in a little bit, you can see because I'm in a pivot table, I automatically get the options to select all of these different options here. So I'm gonna choose all cells, sum of profit uh, values for date. And then I'm gonna choose use a formula uh, to determine which cells to format. I'm gonna click in here. And basically I wanna know if E6 is less than, now I can type in the 90% if I want to, but later on I can point to another target cell if I wanted to. Brilliant, and now I'm gonna remove the dollar sign in front of the six just here because I want that to go down automatically to the rest of them, uh, which is good. And then I'm going to click on format and then choose a color. So I'm gonna to go to more colors here and then go to custom and then choose a sort of reddish color, that will do. That's great, click on okay, click on okay, uh, click on okay and you can see that it's automatically formatted those numbers and because i've removed the dollar sign then it's automatically goes down and yeah it's filtering and the filter updates and it works well so now i want to do the same with this one 
But what I need to do is go to conditional formatting and there's a nice little option there that says manage rules. So I'm gonna click on manage rules. And you know what? It's pretty much exactly the same as this rule here, except for it's not gonna to apply to the sum of profit date. It's going to apply to the sum of the profit. So I'm gonna click on the duplicate rule and there's my duplicate at the top, double click. And then where it says apply to rule E6, I'm just gonna click on the e D6, just a bit to the left. There we go, click on okay. I can click on apply and you can see it's also applying to D6. So I'm gonna do that two more times to apply to sum of expense and sum of received. So duplicate rule, double click to go into it and then click on sum of expense, click on okay. Duplicate rule, double click on the rule, click on sum of received, click on okay. Looks really good, click on apply and you can now see that it's applied, in fact, if I click on OK, that it's applied to my whole sheet. And I can filter by financial year if I want to. To say, for instance, I want a target set at the top, okay? And the target is gonna be 90%. So instead of me typing in arbitrarily this target, if I go to conditional formatting now and managing the rules, and I want the rules of this pivot table, now, instead of it being greater than 90%, let me just highlight the 90% and delete it and click on E1. So click on OK, click on Apply, and the same will happen. Let me just go back each one of these ones here. Instead of 90, just click away, click on E1, just press Enter. Let's go back in here. I like the 90%. There we go. Go to E1. That's great. And the last one, I like the 90%. Click on E1, click on OK. Click on OK. So now I can change the target. So if I want it to be 85%, I can type 85%. Uh, none of them uh, is yeah, below 85%. Let's change this up to 89%. Uh, I've got a few under 89%. Okay, let's just say 92%, uh, a lot more. But you can see now I can be flexible with my target. And again, just like ever, I can change the filters of my pivot table. So there's the secret to pivot table conditional formatting. So there we have it, all you need to know about pivot table conditional formatting. So I feel that this is a good place to end this accounts, this Excel accounts series tutorial. Hope you've got a lot out of it. Uh, make sure you give us a thumbs up and have a look back through all of the other tutorial videos. I'll give you the links below so that you can cha change your, take your accounts from zero to hero. So make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on that notifications button. Uh, we're going to be moving our attention to Microsoft Teams and also Zoom as well, especially for all of you who have to do presentations out there. What are some of the tips and tricks that you need to do to get set up for a training session. Also, if you're a student as well, make sure you look at our website to make sure that you've to ensure that you've got the best setup to get the most out of any training session. So I look forward to seeing you then. Just wanna say take care guys, and thank you so much for watching.